So Andy Purawa for Boxing Social in association with Betfred and I'm joined by Dan Raphael in not necessarily the immediate aftermath but the aftermath of Terence Crawford's stoppage victory against Sean Porter. Just to start from there, Dan, before we do move on to Sean's retirement, just get your thoughts on their, their fight and Terence's stoppage win. It was a very, very good fight. I, you know, it was a little messy at times but it was highly competitive, a super close fight. You know, I was scoring it the same way that the, the judges had it. I think 86, 85 was how I had it when the fight uh, ended, you know, according to the scorecards. They had those two scores, uh, 87, 83, I think, on the other card. In any event, it was a very good fight, super close, but in the end, not close because when you get the knockout, all that other stuff doesn't really make a difference. Um, you know, I predicted in one of the videos that I thought that Crawford might ask. I've been asked for my prediction like every fight. I said my thought was Crawford by a late stoppage. I said 10 or 11. So... I was mainly saying 11, so I can't really take credit, but close enough. I mean, he did the job. Were there any points in the fight tonight where Terence was caught out by Sean, maybe where Sean hurt Terence? Because from our view, I don't really want to say the word wobbled, but you certainly look like Sean caught his attention with his power. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, it's a boxing match. Both guys are throwing and both guys are getting hit. And uh, Crawford showed a good chin, a better chin, I guess, than Sean did. But there's no doubt about it that, you know, if, if, if Terence Crawford is truthful with himself, in his heart, he knows that, that Sean Porter rock, rocked him a couple of times. And, you know, but that's to be expected. When you're fighting the best guys, they're not going to be easy fights. Uh, Sean uh, has been in with everybody. He's taken shots. He's given shots. And you know, Crawford has been in with a lot of good fighters, but maybe not at that level of Sean. But tonight he showed that the, the, all the, the accolades that he's received, mainly on the eye test, now he's proven with a big victory. And, uh, but there's no doubt that, that Sean Porter you know, hurt, hurt Terrence Crawford a few times in that fight. And, uh, it's just boxing. Damn the stoppage, was it a right decision? Yeah. I, have, I mean, I've heard some people suggest that it was somehow a controversial decision. I, I couldn't disagree with that anymore because, you know, if you listen to Kenny Porter in the post-fight press conference and his comments right after the fight, that's his son. And he gave him every opportunity, and not just in, in this fight tonight, but in all of the fights that he's ever had in his life, his amateur career. He knows him better than anybody in this room. Anybody probably on the planet probably knows him even better than his own you know, wife and kids because he's been with him for so long, and especially when it comes to boxing. So when you see him get dropped like that two times and then he says he talks about maybe the preparation wasn't the best, who are we to question the father stopping that fight? What happens in boxing most of the time is we get on father's cases because they don't stop the fight at the time because they don't want to stop their son's fight. This is the one time where he did the right thing, and it seemed like Sean was okay with it. I mean, I don't know if he's okay like he wanted to lose. I mean, I'm sure he's upset, but he totally understands that the father didn't do it out of any other reason than he loves him, and that's his boy. So as Kenny said, tomorrow morning they live across the street from each other. They're going to get up, and he's going to have breakfast with his son, and he wants his, his son, Sean Porter, to be able to have a, a healthy and fruitful life playing with his own kids and spending time with his family and his wife. And uh, that boxing, in the, in, the, in the end, is really just a small part of his overall life. So I think the stoppage was brilliant. The retirement, Dan, just, I know you said you, you, you was actually working ringside, so you missed it in the presser, but just your thoughts on what's been a brilliant career from Sean Porter, who has ducked to no challenge and fought anybody he could. I mean, you just said it exactly right. I mean, Sean Porter's not going to go down in history as the greatest welterweight champion ever. Sean Porter is not going to be in the Boxing Hall of Fame. But what Sean Porter will be is somebody that everybody that ever watched him fight or knew him or interviewed him or talked to him, that he's a good guy. He gave a great effort in all of his fights. He fought everybody, like you said, never ducked anybody. If you look at his resume and the caliber of opponents that he has faced during his career, he's the only guy in the welterweight division, a very rich and pop, you know, populated with great talent this era that, you know, didn't fight every single guy. He never got a chance to fight Pacquiao, that type of thing. But he fought everybody, basically. He fought Errol Spence and Keith Thurman and Terrence Crawford and Danny Garcia, you know, and Kel Brook and, uh, you know, Devin Alexander when he was still a top guy when he won his first title. Even, like, the Pauli Malinagis of the world. I mean, he fought all the names and, and, you know, won some, lost some. Or Dennis Ugas was another guy that he fought and defeated. I mean, he is, you know, the, the throwback, the old school. He didn't care. Make the right deal and he'll get in the ring and fight you and he'll give you a damn hard fight. I'm going to leave it there now because I know Corey is probably wanting to leave and get on with your own work. But it's been a pleasure to catch up with you as always. Thank you for speaking to me. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.